Hi friends, uh, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda and this is Ace Creates. Today I have another podcast episode for you where I'm going to catch you up on everything I've been working on probably for the last month since we last checked in. But you've likely seen some of these projects on my YouTube shorts or on my Instagram reels um, where I do a lot more frequent updates uh, two to three times a week on my reels. So uh, be sure to, to be subscribed if you want to check out um, kind of the in-between updates on my projects throughout the week. Um, I have a lot to share with you because I got through a lot um, and I'm really excited to share this with you. So let's check in with the first major update for you, which is I have my indecision sampler shawl it's lovely um this is the indecision uh sampler shawl which is a tunisian crochet pattern by jennifer lovett from uh violet.loops on instagram this pattern is released today um, i'm actually recording a few days ahead of time but today may 17th when this video goes live um, the pattern will be live for purchase um, and don't quote me on this but Jen usually does like a weekend discount on the code so I'll have the link below if you would like to purchase um, either the DK or fingering weight version of this pattern. As I mentioned it's a Tunisian crochet shawl triangle shawl where you start at the top and you keep building and building and building um, until you get to about 350 stitches or more per row, which takes a lot of time to do. Um, this is a pattern I tested for her. I am using Sorella Cashmere Sock in the colorway Hep Alien. It took uh, just about two and a half skeins for the project. I used 1073 yards uh, for my project. What I really love most about this project is it's kind of a choose your own adventure shawl. So the shawl consists of about eight different Tunisian crochet stitches scattered throughout, um, done in each kind of like a section, and then separated by another um, kind of Tunisian stitch um, to kind of delineate between the sections um, and what's really cool about this pattern and why I call it kind of a choose your own adventure is that once you do the setup rows of Tunisian simple stitch you can choose in whatever order you would like to do your stitches so if you love the smock stitch I suggest you save that to last because you will get to do two, 350 some odd stitches of the smock stitch at the end. Um, if you hate the smock stitch, I would definitely suggest you do it as your second um, section because then you only have to do so many stitches. And so you get to choose the order in which you're doing your Tunisian crochet se sections, which is awesome because that means every shawl out there is different um, based on what you like and what you wanna do um, and so I really liked that aspect of the shawl. It was a fairly simple kind of testing process for me. Um, it took me about a month from cast on to cast off. Um, I cast on right in early April and I cast off literally the day it was due. Um, and uh, I got it turned in um, in, in early May and so um, I really, really loved how this turned out. The yarn is so soft. I did have some splitting issues. Again, I'm not sure if that's the yarn or if that's my tool. I do use the Tunisian Crochet Dreams uh, interchangeable sets, which are the wooden ones. And most of mine are extra pointy, which I prefer my Tunisian Crochet hooks to be 
pointy. Um, it, I find it easier to get into each stitch, um, but sometimes that means they're splitting. And so again, not sure if it's the tool or the yarn, but I did have some splitting issues with this yarn. Um, I'd be interested to try it out with just regular crochet hooks. Um, I use the Clover, sorry. I use the Clover or more hooks um, as my regular uh, crochet hooks. And so I'd be interested to see if I would have splitting issues. Um, so this project took me about over a month. Um, I had several other projects going at the same time. So it wasn't my, I was not monogamous on this project. Um, I probably could have knocked it out a little bit faster had this been the only project I was working on, but I just, I don't want to be a monogamous crafter. I like uh, working on multiple projects uh, based on my mood. Um, so the only thing that I would consider doing in the future with this pattern is if I were to make it again for myself, I would consider adjusting the pattern a little bit so that there's less rows in each section so that I could just do this with two 437 skeins, 437 yard skeins. So the cashmere sock from Suella was at 437 yards. Um, and my personal preference in the way I like to wear um, my shawls is I wear them around my neck, um, kind of wrapped around my neck like this and I will style it you know I'll make it look good but I'll style it like this and uh, I generally wear it kind of like as a um, as the dress up piece of my outfit I will generally wear a very simple t-shirt or tank top or a simple kind of shrug sweater non kind of stitched non handmade by me um sweater and have this kind of be the statement piece um I find that the two and a half skein projects tend to be a little bit or two and a half three skein projects tend to be a little bit too much bulk here and because I live in Southern California um it makes it so that the wearability for the project means that from uh, I can only wear it generally from like maybe November to March, um, which is still a good length of time. But I have some others that are two skein projects that I wear throughout the year regardless. I mean, if it's 100 degrees out, I'm not wearing it. But um, I will wear it in the spring and fall of LA, you know, under 75 degrees. Um, and so I would consider modding the pattern again, um, if I were making it for myself, to be just a little bit less. Um, it actually ends up being one sections, about one sections worth of rows. And so um, I would still get a very nice, very um, supple and like, you get quite a bit of fabric with, uh, just two skeins and so um, that's the only modification that I would make just based on my own personal preference but I love this pattern I think this actually makes a great um kind of like over the shoulder um one uh, because it really I'm doing it backwards but it really showcases and I'll pop in some photos. It really showcases the full section. So think about it, you know, like this. Um, and that's really cute. Um, so like I said, this pattern is available now. I will put the link um, in the description below if you would like to check out the pattern on Ravelry. Again, it's a thing you can um, do the fingering or DK version of the pattern. I think it, I believe it's it's beginner friendly. Um, and so some people might have a little bit of issue with the center stitch and how you do that. But patience, my friends, try it a couple times. I'm, I know you will, you will, you'll figure it out. Um, and so definitely check out this pattern from Jennifer Lovett, the indecision sampler shawl. 
So the next project I have for you is a work in progress. So we're in the, we finished the FOs. Um, I only have one FO for the video, but I have three active whips that I'd like to give some updates on. And I believe some of them you've seen, some of them you haven't seen, or maybe you only saw like a itsy bitsy tiny piece of it, or you saw the yarn that I was gonna make out of it. The first um, project that I am going to show you is my double take Tunisian tank from Kayla Wood at K Crochets on Instagram and Ravelry. And um, it's a Tunisian crochet tank top. I have both the panels done. In fact, I probably could have like completed this for this podcast but i really wanted just one fo for the project or for the podcast um so this is the front panel and the yarn is um sorella silk dk in the colorway monterey which is from the tony lipsy collection um i use so far i've used just over three skeins I'm in my fourth skein and I have this is the back panel um what's cool is right here I have to attach a button which I have a cute little button that I got from my local yarn store so it's kind of like a keyhole back with a button here um and so what I have to do is um seam up at the shoulders seam up at the sides and then I have some finishing work around the neckline and the armholes, and I have to sew on that button, and this puppy's gonna be done. What's cool about this project is you can style it either way. So you can style it with the simple stitch um, as your kind of outward facing side, the right side, or, and the way she shows it in her Ravelry photos, you can do it with the, um, wrong side facing out which looks like a garter stitch i'm choosing to go with the right side which is the simple stitch i feel like it shows off the yarn a little bit more um i really love this i i love sorella's silk dk the 50 50 blend of superwash merino and uh silk it's the perfect summertime yarn i this is now my second project out of it it won't be my last. I don't have any more in my stash. So uh, probably the next time I see one of her pre-orders that is a colorway that's screaming at me, I will probably have to purchase. Although, also, uh, Sorella Yarn is now doing wholesale. And my local yarn store is the only store in California to have Sorella. So if they offer the Silk DK as part of the wholesale program, I might be able to buy it from my local yarn store. Shout out to the Knitting Lounge in Simi Valley, California. This was a pretty quick project for me. Um, I'll be done in the next day or two with it. Um, and I started it, I think April 27th. I left my knitting notebook, my like making notebook at my local yarn store at our Friday night stitch night. And so this is all from memory. So I think I started this April 27th. Um, and again, I probably could have had it done in under two weeks, but uh, I, I'm, I'm just shy, just to over two weeks right now, but I've worked on several other projects um, right now. So I could have got it done a lot faster. Um, each panel took me about three or four days from cast on uh, to cast off. Um, I have a lot more time on my hands now that I'm a stay-at-home mom. I left my job. I left a nine-to-five grind. Um, and now I spend my days with my little one. And so during her napping time is when mommy gets some quiet break time for myself. And that's when I usually have two to three hours to craft. Um, on top of what I normally would in the evening um, after she goes to bed. And so um, I've been able to crank out quite a bit. Um, that's why I will, I will probably have two more finished objects coming at you soon. So 
Uh, this is the Double Take Tunisian Crochet Tank by Kayla Wood. Uh, it'll be a finished object the next time uh, we meet. I'm really excited to have this in my wardrobe now. Um, this will be, I think, my second, well, it's my third kind of tank slash short teed um, garment. So I'm really excited to have this in, as a wardrobe staple for me to show off my handmade knits and have it in a fiber that is not just 100% wool. It's that silk blend. And so I really love it. It's squishy and awesome and amazing. And so look forward to uh, showcasing the whole finished object and telling you really more in depth about the project and how much yarn I use, my gauge, all that fun stuff in the next podcast. So the next project that I am showing you is my Lento. I'm almost there. This is the Lento. This is a pattern by Joanna Hyland. I am using Ruby and Rose's Rose Cloud, uh, which is their Surrey uh, lace weight yarn, and Soft Rose, which is an 8515 Superwash and nylon blend. Um, I think there's 437 yards in a skein. And first of all, I love that yarn and I love that base. And so dyers with that base, I'm gonna be a little bit more attracted to because it just, it comes out really soft and sumptuous and just wonderful. Um, but I, the last time we met, I was right at about here. Um, I finished the body and then I did the ribbing and then I also picked up and did one sleeve and now I am working on my second sleeve here. I have about 55 rows left plus the ribbing and then I will be done and this is my first knitted garment. I'm a baby knitter. I'm super proud of myself. I love the pattern. Um, I feel like it's really beginner friendly. Um, the only, the most complicated thing I had done to this date was I did a, sh a cowl, I did a scarf, and I've done a couple of beanies, and that's the extent of my knitting repertoire. And so I was looking for a pattern that I thought was like pretty beginner friendly. Um, one of the things that I hadn't done before, so I learned, was German, German short rows. And so there's definitely mistakes in here, um, especially around the German short rows and the pickup, um, as well as like picking up for the arm sleeves and like right around the corners. Um, I definitely did one side a little bit better than the other side, but you live and learn. And I'm gonna see if I can kind of um, duplicate stitch over to like close some of that gap. Um, but I'm pretty confident that by the time we meet, this will also, again, this will also be a finished object. Um, I'm in love with it. I really wanted something that was Christmassy. So the colorway is mistletoe mixer and it reminds me of like Christmas lights. Um, that was kind of like part of the inspo photo for this colorway and I wanted something that was like Christmassy, but like not red and green and overtly Christmas. Um, and I think she nailed this colorway. And so um, I'm really excited so much that I'm gonna make another one, but I'm gonna make a short sleeve version one and one without Surrey. So this is a fingering and a lace weight held together. Um, I'm gonna see if I can Get, I have some yarn in my stash already that I, I have picked out for this. It's actually Malabrigo um, sock. And so I don't have a lace weight to go with it that's not like a Surrey. And so I might see if I can just play with some gauge a little bit um, and just hold fingering together um, and make a DK weight. Um, I th think because this pattern really is... Uh, so gracious with uh because it's made on us 10s so six millimeter 
needles. Um, it's got an open, pretty open gauge um, in terms of the stitch. So I'm thinking if I hold the DK together, it just wouldn't be as kind of like open, which is fine for me. Um, other, my other option is also to get some lace weight complementary um, yarn. And I know that uh, that is not like a full blown Surrey where it's like really fuzzy. Um, I know that Malabrigo has one called Silk Paca that I'm interested in, but I really want to go touch it and feel it. And I don't think any of my local yarn stores in the LA region have Silk Paca in stock. So we'll see. But I definitely want to do another Lento in the future and just cap it and just do a short sleeve version. I really love the length that I chose for this. Um, it's just a perfect beginner friendly um, knitted raglan sweater. So I'll have more like about all the needles that I used and all kind of like the final gauge and all that uh, when this becomes a finished object. Um, so I'm really excited to share that with you because hopefully it'll be done in the next week or two. So that is my Lento. See, I've already picked out the yarn for my stash. I'm gonna use this Malabrigo. I just have to find, they don't have Impressionist Sky in that silk paca. So I'm gonna have to find either a complimentary or similar color for it. So my last whip is uh, a test for Jennifer Lovett at Violet Loops on Instagram. And it is called the Full Fade Shawl. Um, I have shown you this yarn before. So the yarn won't be new. If you've uh, seen my last few podcast episodes, the yarn won't be new. Um, but here is the shawl. I'm on about row 50. I just cast it on a few days ago. Um, I wound up this yarn. So the yarn for this shawl is three skeins of Montana Crochet's uh, sock nylon, nylon sock yarn. Um, which is an 80-20 Superwatch Merino nylon blend. And it's three corresponding colors and the yarn's gonna get all fucked because I can't wind yarn and I fail at winding yarn. But it's three, a faded skein. Um, what's cool about this pattern is you could do a three skein fade, you could do a mini skein fade. There are a lot of different fade options that she's including in the pattern. And so that's what I really liked about that. And I also wanted a stash buster project. Um, and this will probably be my last shawl for a while. Um, I don't need a shawl. I don't need another shawl after this. So um, it is a pretty simple pattern. I would, uh, again, call it very beginner friendly. And it will come out in June. So there's not much to show you there other than my progress. Um, hopefully by the next time we meet, I will have cast on the second skein so you can kind of start to see the gradient and the fade. Um, the project is due in early June, so this pattern will be released sometime in early June, that first or second week of June. Um, and so um, I'm excited to share progress with you on that. But that one's a pretty mindless project. Um, it's pretty simple and um, I think it's gonna make a great shawl. Next part of the video, I was actually gonna film as a whole separate video for my spring and summer plans, but then I kept delaying and delaying and delaying and my plans kept changing and changing and changing. I actually filmed a version of it a few weeks ago, then never got around to editing it. And then my plans have changed pretty drastically since then. So I'm not gonna have it be a separate video. Um, it's also pretty ambitious, but because I'm now a stay-at-home mom and I have a little bit more time on my hand to craft, um, I'm completing projects a little bit more, a little faster. And so uh, it's pretty ambitious what I have planned, uh, but pretty confident that I'll be able to do them. They're all pretty, like they're not, sweaters so they're not going to take quite as long um and they're like tanks or tees 
So I'm going to go through a couple of my plans. Uh, some of them I've already like started casting on and swatching and showing. Some of them are returning from hibernation. And so let's get into my spring and summer makes part one. I'm calling it part one because I actually had like a huge list of things that I wanted to do. Um, but I don't want to overshare that and give you guys like a list of like 12 things and then I only complete half of them because I was just being very over ambitious. So I'm calling it part one in case there's a part two in the future, which I'll just tack on to a podcast update. So the first project that I'm bringing out of hibernation is the Lynn Tank from Courtney Clark at uh, I Love Tinderbox on Instagram. And so I will show you this. It's a crocheted tank top. It has this really beautiful uh, front double crochet post detailing, which is really what attracted me to this pattern. Uh, so the yarn is Sorella Nylon Sock from, uh, in the colorway Marseille from her Spring Tonals collection. I actually cast this project on last August. I got pretty far on the, like, the most difficult part of, I would say, the pattern. Um, but then I was getting frustrated and I was, I was like, the, something was wrong either on my end or something with the counts um, and then I found a, a mistake and um, I had bound it together and I'd done like two or three rows uh, once I joined the uh, tri triangles together. I found a mistake, I was getting frustrated and then I was just like, you know what, this needs to go in timeout. And so it's been in timeout ever since. And um, I thought that a, now that it's spring, I should bring this back out of hibernation, really sit down, go back, read the pattern, figure out where I'm at, because I don't know if I like marked that. Um, I'm definitely at the join stage, so I just have to figure out where that is. Uh, but there's also another mistake that I noticed um, in here that I have to decide if I want to go back and rip that up and I don't know if I want to um, I'm trying to see if I can find the mistake um, yeah it's on this panel you can't really see it but there's one no that's not it oh yeah so here's the mistake I'm, I'm hoping it shows up on camera but you see this front post double crochet. It's supposed to have a paired one over here, but here I kind of just continued. I'm kind of thinking that this will just become the back and I'm not gonna fix it. And I'm just gonna try to like make it work because um, I really don't wanna have to go back and do this pattern because um, it's a pretty intricate pattern. Um, well written and everything, um, but it's very intricate. It's definitely not mindless. I have to be concentrating on it. So this will be definitely when the house is quiet and I don't have any interruptions. This is not a stitch night project, but um, I thought that I would love to see this finished and blocked. Um, Cause also I'm a little worried about the size, but I mean, I made this size for my bust. So um, I don't know, I might double check in case my bus has changed. And perhaps I'll be just frogging the whole thing, who knows? But I'd love to uh, see this finished um, and wearable. So uh, that is the Lynn Tank from Courtney Clark. Next project is the Day Off Tank by Ashley Rivas, Tiny Couch Crochet on Instagram. Um, it is a Tunisian crochet tank top. Um, it looks like it's two panels. Um, it's striped, so it has a main color and a contrasting color. And um, I picked up, I have these three skeins of, 
Explorer Knits and Fiber. I'm not sure about the colorway. I got it off a of D-Stash and the person said Fake Spindrift. It's like a minty green, we're going to call it. So I have three skeins of this um, in their Denali sock, yeah, which is an 80-20. Um, so I have three skeins of this. Um, and then I was kind of stash busting to see if I had scraps and whatever for the contrasting stripe. I didn't find anything that I like absolutely loved without needing to wind up a whole skein of yarn. I don't really want to do that. I want to be able to use my like scraps. Um, I didn't find anything like I absolutely loved with that mint green. So right now I have this like cream, um, which is a leftover yarn um, from, I know this is from Woolberry Fiber that I used to make a tricolor Indian flag-ish inspired colored um, scarf for my father-in-law. And so I'm going to use this off-white Ecru if you will, uh, as the stripes. Um, the other thing I've considered is like not striping. Um, but we'll see. Uh, so that's the yarn I'm going to use. I started swatching. I, well, let's be fair. I didn't swatch at first. I cast on for my size and then it was looking huge, like way too big for my bust. And so I was like, huh, I don't know what's up with that. So I measured and my, I was like really off gauge. Um, and I didn't really want to size down a hook because I wanted to make sure that the fabric was still flowing and not so dense. Um, and I also wanted to make sure that the like, the yarn numbers match because I only have three skeins of that mint green. I can't get a, th a fourth. And so um, I really want to make sure that the yarn like estimates are correct. So I'm really trying to like make gauge. So I was like, okay, let me measure this to see. Maybe I just need to make a smaller, like using my gauge, just make a smaller size. So I tried that. Uh, and then um, it's really too small. Like it's probably now this pattern is supposed to have negative ease zero to two inches of negative ease um which for me I'm a 45 ish 44 45 um and so for me that would mean I would need a finished project of 43 to 45 right now with this gauge casting on the size small which is like I don't know what size that bus size that corresponds to, but it's definitely in the thirties. Um, I was measuring like a bus size of like 42, uh, 41. And that was stretching it. Like that's like, so I got to play around a little bit. I'll probably do an actual full blown gauge swatch. Um, and double check and maybe I don't do the small, maybe I have to do the medium. The other thing I thought is maybe doing a tighter starting crochet chain. Um, so you have to chain to start and um, doing a little bit tighter to see, on, and then casting on my size to see if that gets me more in line. If I have to, I will like change the hook, but I really want um, it to match a little bit better. So playing around, but that is the Day Off Tank by Ashley Revis that I'm going to ca cast on pretty soon because I've already got the yarn wound and ready to go. Um, and so um, I'm just looking at this like colors together. So I think that'll look good. That'll look good. I wanted just like a neutral because I didn't really have anything else that would go with it. So the next project um, that I have for you, all the next three projects that I have for you are all still in skein form. Um, I'm going to wait to cast them up before wind them up until I can get some other projects off the hooks um, and then I will be casting these on. So the next project is the Love is Love crop from Courtney Clark. I'm going to be using three skeins of Sorella Yarn um, Cashmere DK in the colorway Mendocino. It's a gorgeous purple colorway. 
and um, the crop or the tank is like a cute uh, cropped tank. Um, so I'm really excited about it. Um, and yeah, there's not much else to say about it, except I'm really excited about it. And this is the yarn I'm going to be using. So the next project I'm also going to be casting on soon for my spring and summer plans is the August Tunisian Tank by Ashley Revis. And I'm going to be using this Merino DK in the colorway uh, The Battle of Helm's Deep from Long Dog Yarn. It's this gorgeous kind of blue, like slightly variegated um, navies, teals, greens. Um, and I'm, I think this is going to look really, really good. This is from her um one collection to rule them all from lord of the rings it's a hundred percent superwash merino wool there's 250 yards in each skein um and this is the battle of helm's deep um it's gonna be a cute tunisian tank um so i'm excited about that and the final project that i have planned for part one of my spring and summer plans is the Preston Top by Kayla Wood of K Crochets. Um, this will be my third pattern for her. And um, I it looks pretty similar to the double take, um, except it doesn't have the same kind of like shaping at the top. And so, um, and there's a free version of this pattern on her blog. So I'm gonna check that out, um, but I originally was gonna try to use different yarn, um, but then I was thinking about my plans for flock. So I'm going to flock again this year. And I really wanted to make sure like I had a finished object from yarn that I had um, gotten at flock. And so originally the yarn that I'm gonna show you was dedicated to another project on my make 12 for the year. And uh, it was dedicated for a knitted shawl, um, which is what I actually saw it it made up into um, but I'm not really interested in making any more shawls uh, right now and so I didn't want this yarn to languish because I didn't actually get a ton of yarn at flock um, I'd only gotten um, I think two like this yarn and like a little like mini set or you know 50 gram minis and so um, I didn't have many options available to me to use from yarn from last year. So I am going to make that Preston top with this Yak DK, which is 60% wool, um, superwash merino, 20% silk, and 20% yak. It's from Yarn Nouveau. And this is the colorway Lydia. It's so soft and like supple and like I just I love the way it feels so I am uh, going to cast that on with this so I think it'll look really 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 great um, I've got four skeins of it so yeah so that's it this may have been a longer podcast uh, than I had originally anticipated but I had a lot to share with you a lot of whips a lot of plans and so I'm really excited to uh, cast off and show you some more finished objects in the near future. My goal is to get another podcast up. I've been really inconsistent with podcasts. And so now that I have a little bit more time on the hand and I feel like there will be more substance, I'm looking probably at every other week. So every two weeks, I think it's a little ambitious for me to try to do every week. But I think every two weeks you're going to get some good content and like noticeable difference in my projects um especially since I'm not a monogamous maker and so I have to work on several things just to keep like my brain like entertained and so I have I have a lot planned and a lot to share with you um, in the next few podcasts so if you uh, liked today's video please consider giving it a big thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel um, I really appreciate it. Um, I record podcasts and vlogs and uh, I, I've done a lot of short form content too. So if long form content is your thing, 
consider subscribing for some short form content. I do like little tutorials and Tunisian crochet and just some funny memes and that kind of thing. Thank you so much for watching friends. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye now.